you would have had to have been in a distant place or uh, uh, to have not heard there's been significant change in, in HA in the last uh, six months and there's significant change occurring at the moment. So fundamentally, the outcome of the review into HAL has, has resulted in three things. We have a, a new uh, grower-owned RDC. We have a new constitution and the constitution is sets the parameters or the objects of the company um, and it really dictates uh, what, what we must do. And a new deed of agreement or statutory funding agreement which actually puts some boundaries around those objects or, or responsibilities. You'd also be aware that we have a new funding model and, and this funding model is novel and it does, it, as John Lloyd said uh, in the opening address uh, a couple of days ago, it, it ensures two things. The first thing it ensures, it enshrines the matching levy component uh, for all levy paying industries. That is guaranteed, the vegetable levy, the passion fruit levy, the banana levy, the apple and pear levy is, is, is maintained and, and the, uh, that is enshrined that all those levy dollars will be used for that industry. Generally speaking, we, we've done some analysis over the last five or six years and that, that matched figure is around 40, 46 to $44 million annually. So pool one is, is enshrined. Pool two is, is the other $44 million of, of government matching funds that have been available in the past. We're actually looking at targeting around 10 to 12 strategic investment areas that can really make a difference to horticulture in the long run. And that's where that other approximately $44 million is, is going to go. And if you ask, well, why is there 10 areas? Well, it's pretty easy. 10 into 44 is 4.4. And to, to affect critical change in those really strategic areas, you need, you need sub substantial uh, uh, financial critical mass. And so, um, you know, if it was 20 funds, in, into 44, it would be two and a half million dollars annually. So what we're trying to do is, is uh, pick these key strategic areas and affect significant change through financial critical mass and partnering with, with a range of um, uh, uh, co-investors. One of those key areas, uh, more than likely, will be trade and market access. And I want to talk about that now. The, in our new constitution, in the, in the objects of the company, um, number F it is, we, we have a constitutional mandate where, where we have to promote and further the interests of horticultural industries overseas, in specifically in relation to the export of horticultural products, the sale and distribution of horticultural products in and the consumption of horticultural products in countries other than Australia. So it, it, it's fairly direct. And, it, and it's, a, it's an area uh, we've been involved in before, but this, this direction uh, says we have to do things differently and, and it effectively says we have to take on a greater a coordination and leadership role in the space of um, tra all matters regarding uh, trade for, for the horticultural industry. So what's going to change? Oh, I'll go back. Um, so, so this, the standard operating procedure with, res, with respect to trade and market access in HA will change from HAL. We need to have a more efficient and transparent process for market access application and, and seeking industry advice. And it's key that we continue to seek industry advice on these key matters. The second point is really important. Greater coordination and leadership, but that doesn't mean doing. Um, I think there's been some... Um, information or, or a misinterpretation of that, the object of the company, in that some people have said, oh, David, does that mean HA are going to be running around um, Asia um, doing a whole lot of market access and trade activities? No, no, that's not the case. W what we've been asked to do is provide greater coordination and leadership to ensure that all those activities are targeted and well planned they're actually substantiated. There's some real data supporting supporting those initiatives, and they fall under a, a, a really uh, a contemporary or a current 
uh, export strategy. And really importantly, they're backed by industry export readiness. And I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I won't mention the industry, but th there was an industry who looked at doing some, a pilot study uh, in Asia recently. And uh, there was a lot of uh, work with some co-investors and did a lot of pre-work. And it all was going to be a great pilot. The, the, the stumbling block was, when, when it was all arranged, the um, overseas auditors came to Australia to look at some of the packing houses because the packing houses were part of the pilot study. And the packing houses uh, were not up to the standard that, that, that our um, potential uh, Asian uh, counterparts required. So the whole thing fell over. And so that, that's a great example of being the industry being export ready. We must be export ready. If you're going to go into these premium markets, you have to have supply. Um, y you can't not supply for a period of time. You have to ensure there's continuity of supply. And um, you would think that would be a normal um, business response, but sometimes it's not. So as I said, the first three I mentioned before, the fourth and the fifth one, what we're looking at doing, particularly with from uh, with tr uh, trade shows and and um, some of the some of the significant trade shows like FVF and Asia Fruit Logistica, we actually want a one country approach. And there's been a lot of talk about um, Team Australia, and uh, really important we do that. For me, that's that's the end game. We're not going to get there tomorrow. We have to take baby steps, as, as Jeff said, and and this step in. Um, uh, and I'll show you uh, what we're doing at Asia Fruit Logistica later this year. Um, everyone's going to be together. First time. You would think, you would, uh, as I think Scott Montague said yesterday, we, we've, we've got to lose the I can do it on my own mentality. And uh, we've got to coordinate and collaborate. Well, well, this is the first time that we'll be doing that. And I've got to say vegetables have been really, really at the front of leading that, uh, leading that coordination. So that'll be great. And I think, uh, I think uh, at HIA, and as an industry, we look to ha need to have a purposeful export culture. You know, uh, across, uh, I know the vegetable numbers about, uh, Michael said about 7 or 8% yesterday of, of gross value of production. But across horticulture, it's about 11%. So, so we need to have an aspirational goal in the industry. And is 11% good enough? And clearly it's not. So what, I what is our aspirational target in the next five years? Should it be 15? Should it be 20? I suspect. <laughs> It's got to have a two in front of it at least. And uh, so I think we need, to, we need to be bold and we need to, need to be aspirational around it. Before I finish, I'd, in a previous job, I, I, I did a lot of R&D business in Asia and uh, all parts of Asia. And I, I learned three things. Um, respecting people when you're doing business is really important, and particularly people from other cultures and... and uh, Doing business in such a manner, particularly in, in Asia, it doesn't matter whether it's in Northern or Southern Asia, that respects their cultural practice is critical. And, and, and uh, I know there's industries and vegetables and, and, and uh, apple and pear, they get it right. I've seen instances, and, I, and again, I'm not going to share, share, share the specific um, um, uh, in incident, but on two occasions, um, We've received calls from government uh, after after trade shows where there was, uh, I guess, um, a report to us of significant cultural breach, deal dealing with business you want to do um, people you or business partners you want to do business with, and uh, uh, it, it, it astounded me. So I think respecting the cultural differences and and in Asia and. It's all about respecting face and, and doing business in, in, in an appropriate manner. And that involves building relationships and trust. And that, that can take three years. It's not going to happen tomorrow. And uh, you've got to be in it for the long haul. And, uh, and again, as Scott said yesterday, it's risky. And there's an opportunity cost when you're involved in all that, uh, building those relationships and, and trusts. And the last one is logistics. You go to Northern Asia, the supply chains are really mature and non-existent and you come from a sophisticated market where the supply chain is mature here and you've got to, you've got to take a few steps back and that's that's challenging when you're working with an immature supply chain so fundamentally we need to 
it, it, it's a bit of a significant transformation in approach and paradigm shift um, in, in the way we approach culture and, and exporting. So it's critical we get it right though. Lastly, this is uh, Asia Fruit Logistica this, this uh, September. Following that, we're doing a similar thing at uh, FEF in China. So um, all, the, all the Australian uh, uh, exporting industries will be together under Australian Pavilion. This is the back end of the shot. Uh, vegetables, if you like, will be at the other end, uh, closer to the front. And but that's the first time we've done that. And we're going to get better at it. We haven't, uh, we're not, certainly not perfect at it, but uh, again, it's a good step as, uh, to Jeff's point again. And that's, that's the layout uh, at uh, AFL. And uh, so I want to close on that. I just want to close. I think it was Winston Churchill that said, um, all the really important things in life and business are difficult. And you know, that's why, that's why people run around and do all the non-important st stuff in life and business because they find all the important stuff really challenging and difficult. And exporting is just that. It's tough, there's risks, but uh, if you get it right, it's worth it. So I want to congratulate Ausveg. Um, I want to, the Vegetable Market Access Program is an exceptional program. I know, Jeff, we met in Adelaide uh, three years ago and there was, there was considerable debate as to what that market access program looked like and whether we needed it. But I, I think this program's delivered some great results. So congratulations and um, have a great day.